All right, software wallets versus hardware wallets here. We're going to be discussing these two types of crypto wallets or Bitcoin wallets, depending on your needs. You'll definitely want to make sure you're not using the wrong wallet type. So here, let's discuss and take a look at software wallets versus hardware wallets so that you can know that you're set up right and your Bitcoin and your cryptocurrencies are safe and secure. What's going on? I'm Jeff from 10tononline.com. Now, my work with 10ton, really the, the work that I do is all about building and running successful and fulfilling online businesses. But of course, here today, it's all about crypto wallets, Bitcoin wallets, and all this wild, crazy, fun stuff. Now, before we really get rolling, be sure to stick around to the end of this video where I'll show you where you can go and what you can do to learn even more about all this, like I say, wild, crazy stuff, Bitcoin, crypto wallets, blockchain, altcoins, all this great stuff, and even how you can get started with this stuff for yourself and really get your head around how it all works. And maybe more importantly, my friend, what it all means. This is where I am, the implications, where we're going to be five years from now, 10 years from now, this sort of stuff. So like I say, stick around to the end and I'll show you what you can do and where you can go to learn more. All right. Now, in the meantime, on to the main event. But before we really begin, of course, this video here is all about software wallets versus hardware wallets, right? So is it safe to assume that you already know about crypto wallets or Bitcoin wallets? Do you know what these things are? After all, comparing software wallets and hardware wallets is kind of like the next step, right? So just super quickly, just to make sure you and I are both on the same page and we're both talking the same language here, your wallet, your crypto wallet or your Bitcoin wallet is simply a place for you to store your Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies. I think of the various wallets that I have, the various crypto wallets that I have as bank accounts, because that's really kind of what they are. Different bank accounts that I've set up in various places to store my Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies. And of course, each wallet, whether it's a software wallet or a hardware wallet or some other kind of wallet, each has both a public key and a private key. You know what these two things are, right? I hope so. <laughs> I really hope so. But again, because so many people are so new to all this stuff, it can be kind of confusing and complex and kind of jargony. So just to make sure we're both on the same page, again, before continuing, here's the very simple basic way that I describe your wallet's private key and public key. Your wallet's public key is like your bank account number. Anyone who knows your bank account number can't access the funds that are stored inside your account there, but they can deposit money into it. That is exactly what your wallet's public key is. Again, whether that's a software wallet, a hardware wallet, or some other type of crypto wallet. Now, what about your private key? Well, your private key is like the PIN number or the password that you've set on your bank card that's connected to your bank account, right? So here you need your PIN number in order to access the funds that are stored within your account, right? And if someone else finds out what your PIN number or your password is, then they can gain access to the funds that you've stored in your bank account. Once again, this is exactly what your wallet's private key is. So obviously keep it safe. All right, with all of that out of the way, and I apologize for the hopefully not too lengthy introduction, but we've all got to be on the same page here. And again, it can be a little bit complex and confusing for folks who are new to all this. So now that we know about this stuff, what we can do is we can dig into the big question here, which of course is software wallets versus hardware wallets. All right, so first up, let's talk about software wallets. These are sometimes referred to as soft wallets or sometimes referred to as hot wallets. And by the way, these are the most widely used, the most common type of crypto wallet. A software wallet is simply an application that you would install maybe on your computer or on your smartphone to store your Bitcoin. Exodus and Samurai are two examples of software wallets that you could use, but of course, as I'm sure you can imagine, there are many, many others available. Now, if you wanna dig a little bit deeper here, there are actually no less than three different types of software wallets. There's desktop wallets, there's mobile wallets, and there's something called online wallets. Desktop wallets should hopefully be self-explanatory. These are applications that run directly on your computer. So an application like Coinami or Exodus, these are great examples of desktop wallets. 
also self-explanatory, I hope, are mobile wallets. These are apps that, wouldn't you guess, you'd install on your smartphone that you would literally carry around with you everywhere you go. Just imagine for a second going to a farmer's market or, I don't know, a garage sale or maybe a local charity event and pulling out your phone and paying with Bitcoin. Last but not least, we have online wallets, and these are quite a bit different than desktop and mobile wallets. We'll talk more about online wallets, this specific type of wallet, in just a second. Next up, though, another option for you to consider is a hardware wallet. These are sometimes called cold wallets. Now, a hardware wallet is similar to a USB drive, so you just plug it into your computer, but it's got special software installed on it to store your Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies. Both Trezor and Ledger are top choices if you're interested in hardware wallets and going this particular route, but of course, once again, there are many choices available. Now, what's great about a physical hardware wallet is that you can transfer Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies to and from the wallet, just as you would with your software wallet or your mobile wallet, whatever kind of wallet you're using. And here's what's great. Once you're done, you unplug the USB cable and you take your hardware wallet and you put it in a safe place. What this means, my friend, is that your hardware wallet is not connected to the internet 24 seven. This means that your hardware wallet is incredibly secure. They're physically disconnected from the internet when they're not in use. This means that hardware wallets are way, way more secure. They are the most secure type of crypto wallet. Stored on a hardware wallet, your Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies are super crazy safe and secure, especially over the long term. And anytime you want to move crypto to or from your hardware wallet, all you do is you pull it out of that safe place where you're storing it and you plug it into your computer via USB cable. That's typically the most common way to connect. And then you would conduct your transaction from there. As a matter of fact, my top hardware wallet of choice, Trezor, interfaces seamlessly with my software wallet of choice, Exodus. You plug the Trezor in and it shows up in Exodus as an extra wallet. And this makes it absolutely dead easy to move crypto, Bitcoin, Ethereum, any altcoins that you might have from Exodus, from your software wallet over to your hardware wallet or vice versa. Okay, now earlier on, we touched on a third type of software wallet called an online wallet, right? Well, your online wallet is in fact part of your crypto exchange account. This is the account that you would deposit money into to go and purchase your crypto. So your online wallet is a part of this exchange account. Now, while it's simple and easy to just keep your Bitcoin and other crypto on your exchange account or in your exchange account, and while you can access your account from any internet connected device, which is super convenient. It's much, much safer to store your crypto either in a software wallet or even better in a hardware wallet. And that's because really, my friend, it boils down to your private keys. Talked about this earlier, right? Again, we got to understand some fundamentals before we can get to this part, right? With your online wallet in your exchange account, it's the exchange service who controls your wallet's private keys. And way back at the beginning, and I apologized for that introduction, but again, we need that foundation before we can get here. Remember I said that whoever has your private keys can gain access to your funds. And it is certainly not without or, or beyond the realm of possibility that your exchange account could get hacked. This has happened in the past. In other words, what I'm saying here is that you've got to trust the exchange account and you've got to hope and pray that they never get hacked. With a software wallet like Exodus or some other software wallet, your private keys are stored on your computer or on your mobile device, which is of course much more secure. However, in rare cases, it's still within the realm of possibility that your computer or your smartphone could get hacked, lost, damaged, destroyed, or otherwise compromised. With a hardware wallet, of course, your private keys are stored offline, which makes it impossible to hack. That's why hardware wallets are the most safe and secure option for you. So while you can certainly keep a small amount of Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies in your exchange accounts, 
for regular transactions, that's perfectly fine, but it's really strongly recommended to keep the majority of your holdings on a software or a hardware wallet. In fact, the general rule, sort of the loose rule, unwritten rule, is anything over a thousand bucks, you should really be storing on a hardware wallet. But for yourself, you can go with whatever amount feels right for you. Now, interestingly, no matter what type of crypto wallet you go with, your Bitcoin and your other tokens, interestingly, and this is where it starts to get a little, yeah, <laughs> your Bitcoins and your other cryptocurrencies aren't actually stored in your wallet. We just say that it's stored in your wallet just to make it easy to understand, but really, and this is the brain bender, your crypto is actually stored way down on the blockchain. Your wallet simply provides you with a simple and pleasant interface for accessing the Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies that are assigned to you. Really how it works is it's your wallet's private keys that grants you access to the crypto that's currently assigned to your wallet's public address. That's how it works. And that's why it's so crucially important to protect your private keys. But I gotta say here, really honestly, for regular folks like you and I, we don't need to know all this technical stuff about how blockchain works and how wallets don't actually hold crypto and things like this. Instead, most importantly, what we really need to know is that it does work. And we also need to make sure that we're using the wallet type or maybe the combination of wallet types that works best for us. So my friend, I hope all of this has been enlightening and educational. Now, if you're ready to take the next big bold steps into the world of Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies, and again, like I said way back at the beginning, really understanding what all this stuff means and where things are headed, and if you're really ready to wrap your head around all this stuff and gain a deep understanding, again, of what it all means, then be sure to check out my book, Understanding Bitcoin. I've got to tell you here, it really was a passion project, a labor of love, because I'm so fascinated and interested in all this stuff. And I've got to tell you, I love telling this story. I try to tell this story at the end of each video. I actually wrote this book for my dad. He's a pensioner. He's retired. We were sitting around one day on his back deck in the backyard there, having a couple of beers. And he said to me, hey, Jeff, what is this thing? I keep seeing this thing called Bitcoin. What the heck is Bitcoin? So what I decided to do, I couldn't really give him sort of a short, succinct answer in the moment because it's so <laughs> complicated. So what I did is I gave him a 189 page answer for Father's Day. Like I say, I love telling that story. So it really was a, a passion project. Now, the biggest challenge that I had with writing this book, with this Understanding Bitcoin project, was first making Bitcoin simple enough for anyone to understand, including a retired pensioner who has, I don't want to say zero technical skill, but it's, it's my dad, he's pretty minimal. And I had to make it super condensed as well. I didn't want to hand them this like 500 page book, right? I had to boil it all down in simple language and keep it under 200 pages. So like I say, it truly was a passion project. It was a complex project for me, but also very satisfying. I know you're going to love it. And I look forward to seeing you there.